Aussie natives. They're tough enough to withstand our harsh climate, but more than that, they're wonderfully unique. Tell you what, I'm going to show you some of the best Aussie natives around and dispel some myths along the way. And what better place to showcase their beauty than here at the Australian Botanic Garden at Mount Annan. With so many areas of Australia suffering from severe weather conditions, drought, water restrictions, as gardeners we are facing some challenges when it comes to keeping our plants alive. So it just kind of makes sense to grow Aussie native plants. Now these plants blow the myth that natives aren't showy completely out of the water. So this is the beautiful scovola or fan flower. And they call it the fan flower because if you look closely, the flowers are flat and fan shaped and absolutely smothered in blooms. So this is a new scovola, it comes from a series called the Blessing Series, which comes in shades of white, pink and a beautiful purple colour. And they're super compact, extra tough and as you can see, long flowering and look spectacular en masse. I also like to use them in pots and hanging baskets. There's also some wild and wacky varieties like this low growing or more ground covering form of casuarina. And look at it, it's so wonderfully hair like and it looks amazing cascading over an embankment. Now this has to be one of the most recognisable Australian plants. So this is of course the beautiful waratah. And the name waratah, the indigenous name, means red flowering plant. And you can see it does have spectacular red flowers. But there are also some white forms available. And you can see why the early botanists were really taken by this plant. This particular variety is called Shady Lady, so you can grow it in both full sun or shade. But best of all, those nectar rich flowers are a feast for the birds. In my grandparents' day, Australian plants were allowed to grow wild and free in gardens just like they did in the bush. But unfortunately what that meant is that some of the more shrubby natives, so Eugrevilleas, Callistamins, some of them would become quite big and straggly. Now we now know that if you want a bushier, better looking plant, then you should get out the secateurs. So you can start pruning Australian native plants when they're young. If I'm ever walking through the garden and I come across any young natives, I'll just nip out those growing tips just to create a bushier plant. But when the plants get a bit bigger, like this, you can start to prune after flowering. So you just make the cut somewhere behind the faded flower and you'll get a much bushier, beautiful looking plant. Some of you might think of native plants as being all big and straggly, but in the half century since we've been growing and exploring our native flora, we've developed some really great smaller, more compact varieties. Now I'm a really big fan of the flowering gums and take a look at this. This is the beautiful Summer Beauty. It's a grafted variety. It has these lovely salmon pink flowers. Bees are enjoying it as much as I am. But it also has really kind of May Gibbs style gum nuts in the autumn time. It's a really attractive variety. But the beauty, of course, of grafting these flowering gums is that you can guarantee flower colour, you can grow them in a wider range of soils, and they're perfect for smaller gardens. Australia has some of the most infertile soils in the world and so our Aussie plants have had to evolve to survive in less than perfect conditions. But of course if you want your Australian plants to not just survive but thrive then it's really important to feed them. Now some Australian plants, not all, but some, like the Banksias and the Grevilleas, are phosphorus sensitive and so your best bet is to reach for an Aussie native plant food like this stuff right here. Now it's a complete fertiliser that's organically based and it's specifically designed for Australian plants, which means you can be confident using it on even the most phosphorus sensitive natives. Now in here, you'll find the full range of macro and micro trace elements. So basically everything your native plants need to reach their full potential. But it also encourages something that I think every fertiliser should beneficial microbes. So they're like teeny tiny little garden helpers that go to work in the soil and do lots of wonderful things like unlock more nutrients and enhance root growth. And of course the bigger the root system, the more access that plant has to water and nutrients. Now I'm a big fan of combining Australian plants with exotic plants together to get different looks, particularly in pots. And this is a really easy project that you can get stuck into too. Now when it comes to teaming the plants together, I like to throw out the notion of Aussie plants versus exotic plants and just think of them as plants. That way you can take a look at their growing needs but also their colours and textures and forms. So for example, 
some of these colourful Australian paper daisies or even birthday candles, which is a great compact Australian native plant, I find go really well with grasses or some of these exotic succulents like portulacas. Whereas on the other hand, if you've got some of the more cottagey looking natives, like the beautiful scavola, it looks really good with cottagey looking exotics. So I've got some variegated ajuga here, some liriope with those great purple flower spikes, some agastache, which is really long flowering, and I'm combining it with a beautiful exotic echinacea, which is one of those late flowering perennials that attracts both the bees and the butterflies. Now, don't they look just gorgeous? The perfect potted showpiece for your patio or balcony. Really hope that I've inspired you to throw away some of those myths about native plants and include lots more Aussie beauties on your planting menu this season.